Well, I hope you learned how to interact back in kindergarten, learn how to work and play well with others. That's what's important. I'll tell you what's collaboration. This is collaboration. Give us a call. That's collaboration. If you don't, I think the really important thing about developmental screening, any kind of screening, is it's, it's don't ask, don't tell didn't work for the military. It doesn't work for families. It doesn't work for children. If you don't ask a parent what their concerns are, my experience is that most parents won't tell you what they're actually thinking because they're kind of waiting for someone to give them the green light that it's okay to talk about their concern because you got to remember from a psychological perspective these parents are scared shitless excuse my language but they they are terrified that something may be wrong and no one's telling them that anything's wrong so that's kind of like okay maybe nothing's really wrong maybe i'm being a worry ward so i don't say what's really wrong but everyone around we all learned back in high school don't tell people what you really think if it's a problem if they're your friend because they get mad at you because it's kill the messenger so this is a lesson that, society, that we learned very early on, not to tell people what we're really thinking for social, con social uh, continuity. And then this, the payoff is that kids don't get screened over. So if you don't ask them, they don't tell you. I can't remember how many times I've asked, m quite often the mother, oh, when did you first have your concerns? And they say, man, very early on I was worried. Something seemed off with this child. I, I just didn't understand. But everyone kept on telling me either everything was fine or that I assumed everything was fine because nobody told me anything was wrong. And then about 24, 36 months, all of a sudden someone said, you know, I think you really know, you need to get your child worked up. But they were worried before the 12 month checkup. So again, don't ask, don't tell, it does not work. Also, I'd like to say that, uh, I can't remember which physician said earlier, don't use jargon when you're uh, talking to a parent. I remember very early on in my work asking a parent, how often does your child have kind of, you know, stereotypic motor movements? And she said, he never has those, Dr. Graff. And this is a kid who was sitting in the corner and kind of flapping and just sort of staring at the wall and not looking at us. I said, well, how often does he do that? And he said, oh, all the time. <laughs> so I, I like, okay. Next time I say, how often does he do this? Or how does he do, learn again the operative language of the symptoms. How often does, instead of saying stereotypic motor movement, say, you know, flapping his hands, rocking, little things like that, standing on tiptoes. Learning the actual operational language of the symptoms is far more useful than the specific jargon because parents, unless they are uh, professionals, may not use that jargon to understand it. What are regional centers? If you don't know, we're private nonprofit corporations. We have a contract with the California Department of Developmental uh, Disabilities. And we provide state mandated services and supports for persons with developmental disabilities age three and over, as well as infants and toddlers at risk for developmental disabilities. So we serve all kinds of, we have two different programs, basically the zero to three, which is early start for the California Early Intervention Services Act and the California Prevention Act. And we are the operative uh, agency which implements that in the state of California. You go to other states, they have different ways of doing it. And we also, this is part of the federal zero to three legislation. End of sermon. Uh, three, three and over, uh, children, adults, senior citizens are served under the Lanterman Act, uh, Lanterman Development Disabilities Act, the California Wel Welfare and Institutions Code. Uh, we literally consider our services cradle to the grave. Uh, we have, paid, matter of fact, one of the issues we have right now is I've been involved, uh, and we're starting to get involved working with uh, various uh, ethics committees when we have these uh, DNR and the POLST, uh, the physician, I forget what POLST stands for, basically when advanced medical directives, we get patients who are in their 60s, 70s, or 30s, 40s, but they have substantial disabilities with cerebral palsy, epilepsy, and other conditions, and now they're going into the question of should they be resuscitated, there's multiple uh, visits to ERs and things like that, and you know we have patients who are you know just like the rest of us. We, you know the, or as I was listening to the radio, uh, you know everybody's an N of one. All persons who live will eventually die, and therefore you have to make these decisions. And uh, the regional center is part of that system, helping to make decisions for people with developmental disabilities. Our system itself is we're 21 regional centers throughout the state. So if a patient that you're working with uh, is moving, let them know that there are, there's a regional center in another county. Every single county is connected with a regional center. Some of, them are, uh, some of them are connected with multiple regional centers, like in LA County, there are seven different regional centers. Uh, you move up to Alturas or something like that, that maybe seven or eight counties are associated with one regional center. It's based on roughly about a population of base of 1.5 million persons per regional center. It can be within a county or extra county. Uh, there's 240,000 persons served throughout the state, not including Early Start. 
That's actually only about a third of the people that should be hooked up with us. If you look at it as developmental disabilities hitting about two to three percent of the population as a whole, and you look at the number of children, number of adults, state of California population about 33 to 35 million people, there really should be about 660,000 people in our system. So we're actually as good as we are in terms of uh, doing surveillance and recruiting and, and enlisting people into our program, we're still only getting about a third of the people that actually should be in the system. Uh, which is kind of scary when you consider how our budget is are, are being set aside for people. TCRC or tri County Regional Center serves Ventura, Santa Barbara, and San Luis Obispo counties. So if you have a patient who lives right on the cusp, like in Westlake or that area, they could literally be an LA County address, and they should be if they sh may actually be served by North LA Regional Center rather than us. If you have patients who are up in Fraser Park. Uh, literally one side of the street in Razor, Fraser Park is Tri-Counties Regional Center, the other side of the street is, uh, is Kern County Regional Center, so it, sometimes it can be a little funky. But right now we're serving roughly 15,000 patients total, including our Early Start program, about 12,500 uh, persons age three and over, and about uh, 2,500 under the age of uh, uh, three. And Ventura County itself has over 50% of the caseload of Tri-Counties Regional Center. Now, the Land Act itself serves specific developmental disabilities. I, heard, I was hearing someone earlier talking about how developmental threats such as ADHD are things which get reported. Well, that we don't serve persons with an attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. That may be a comorbid diagnosis, but that's not an eligibility for regional center services. Uh, we serve intellectual disability, which is a diagnosis formerly known as mental retardation, uh, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, autism, and the condition we call the fifth category, which is someone who functions similar to or requires services similar to that of intellectual disability. And I defy anyone to really define it better than that because that's what the state says. They haven't bothered to define it better than that. And it's very confusing, I think, for everybody. And every single regional center looks at it differently. So it's a very confusing uh, eligibility. But the things such as autism itself, intellectual disability, those are actually much better defined. Is a diagnosis enough for our services uh, for over th three and over? No, it's not. The condition must be substantially disabling in three or more areas per Title 17 of the California Code of Regulations. So if you're working with very young children who were involved in our Early Start program, and then all of a sudden, age three, they are no longer associated with us because they actually were not considered substantially disabled, the parents may be very confused and be coming to you and asking for your assistance. And again, we welcome, again, collaboration. Please contact us, con you know, let us know, send a letter, make a phone call, let us know if there's something we are missing in your opinion. We would like to know that information. We are not, uh, you know, our mission is not to keep a door closed. Our mission is really to, to to identify and work with people who have specific disabilities. And sometimes if that information, again, the don't ask, don't tell, if we don't have the information, we can't act on it. Um, regional centers make their own eligibility diagnoses. Uh, this is important because we will get, you will send us a patient and say, I have diagnosed this child with autism spectrum disorder. Uh, we don't say autism spectrum disorder or ASD, even though that seems to be the term of art. That's where it's moving towards these days, but we don't use that. Regional centers have to, we use the ICD-10. Uh, and P pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, PDD-NOS or Asperger's syndrome, they're not autism per ICD-10. Those are still kept in there as specific different codes, even though the DSM-5 that's put out by the American Psychiatric Association comes out in October of 2013 is going to just use the term ASD probably for all the pervasive developmental disorders. And a lot of families are already talking to me saying, well, you know, the language is going to change, so how, what do you feel about this now? I say, we are actually operating for the state of California under ICD-10. 